Hello, welcome to Delight Channel, Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. This is an NGO where we have a vision of world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. If entrepreneurship is about problem solving, which problem should you be solving? That is the question we will try to unpack for you this week. Welcome. If you've been here, we've defined entrepreneurship different ways, but I would like to just say that it is the activity of setting up business or businesses where you take on financial risk and other related risk, all in the hope of making some profit or achieving certain desired outcomes. But my definition has been that entrepreneurship is about solving problems. So this week, what we want to try and unpack is, if you have decided to travel on the road of entrepreneurship, and by the way, we have covered a lot of grounds already in this series. So, if you have missed the past videos, go back and watch. But if you have watched those videos and you have still decided that, given the DNA, given the characteristics, given what it takes to be an entrepreneur, you want to travel on the road of entrepreneurship, the question then is, what problem should you be solving? How do you know whether you have found the kind of problem that you should be solving? In evaluating and deciding which problem you should be solving or whether the problem you are trying to solve is worth the while and will lead you to your desired outcome in entrepreneurship, there are four questions that you need to answer. Now, it may vary from problem to problem because not all problems are of commercial desire. There are people who are social entrepreneurs who just want to, 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 to see the society become better, either get kids off the street, see that the girl child is treated better, see that we have a cleaner community and whatever the objectives are. But the truth of the matter is that by and large, ultimately, everything still gets reduced in one way or the other into the financial terms, including the tech perennials. For all the excitement that they have with technology, if it still doesn't pay something back, unfortunately, it doesn't get sustainable. So, the idea, therefore, is that these four questions I'm about to share with you, you need to find the way to either use them as they are shared or apply them in a manner that it helps you to take another step in the direction of having successful entrepreneurship. What are these questions? Number one is, what problem are you trying to solve? Meaning, how much do you know about the problem? What is the length? What is the breadth? What are the variables? What are the complications? How deep is your knowledge? The truth of the matter is that it is impossible, practically impossible for you to solve a problem that you do not know. So, if you are just having an anecdotal knowledge of that problem, or you are looking at it from a distance and it's not very clear to you, your very first step to know whether you have found the kind of problem you should be investing your energy, your emotions, your goodwill, and all that you've got into it, is to find out all that you can about that problem. Dig it up. Get your feet wet. Ask questions. Get into the field. Get down to the, to, the, to the point of impact and seek for all the knowledge that you can find. That way, you are in a position to take an informed decision whether this is a problem that you really should be trying to solve or it's an event that time will resolve by itself. Make that point number one. Point number two is, who are you trying to solve this problem for? If you do not know the end user, the ultimate beneficiary or beneficiaries of this solution, you may be making a mistake. You may be surprised that what you actually thought was a problem is something that people really love and they are not even interested in letting go. It is therefore necessary that as you are finding out as much as you can about the problem, you are also finding out as much as you can 
about the beneficiaries, the people that are going to consume the solution you are working to deliver. If you do not get these two things properly um, explored and established, you may end up investing in things that we either not pay you anything right now or may not pay you anything in the long run. Make that point number two. Point number three, therefore, writing on one and two is, are they willing to pay for it? Not all problems that are supposed to be solved or we are trying to solve are the consumers willing to pay for. And if they are not willing to pay for it, either in cash, in kind, in appreciation, in response, it probably means that you are not trying to solve the right problem. So you need to find out, are they willing to pay for it? And the last but not the least question is, how much are they willing to pay? Why is that necessary? If you are going to spend so much to solve a problem and the market is only willing to pay so little, even if you start, that equation is not balanced. It certainly, therefore, will not be sustainable. So it is not just enough to know that they are willing to pay. It is necessary to, get, to, to, to confirm and establish the fact that what the market is ready to pay is justifying the amount and the effort and the labor and all the requirements you need to solve that problem. Have I made sense? So, one, what's the problem? Two, who are the beneficiaries? Three, are they willing to pay? And four, how much are they willing to pay? If all these questions are not answered, yes, 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 there is a very, very good chance that you are climbing up the wrong tree. You therefore need to step back and do a self and a different evaluation. If you then have the yes that you require, there are two other variables that you need to be aware of as you go about becoming an entrepreneur. And these variables are innovation and invention. Okay? There are people who are discouraged in entrepreneurship because they think that you must be an inventor because you can, before you can be an entrepreneur. No. Sometimes all you need, if I most of the time, all you need is to be an innovator. So what's the difference? Okay, so invention speaks to creating something brand new, something with, with more or less very unique features, something groundbreaking, something unique. But what does innovation mean? Innovation means that the core of that solution already exists, the use cases and the application and the, and, the, and the presentation is what you are playing around with. Take as an example the NFC technology, the Near Field Communication Technology. It's been around for a while. It is used in ID card, how to get into offices. Then you find it being used for registration for now. Some tech guys are now beginning to even take this into payment solutions. And I'm sure that others may still come along down the line that will take it much further than where it is right now. So what's the point? The point is that if you keep your eye on the problem, it may be small, it may be big, and you keep your eye on the people you are solving it for, and you are sure that they are willing to pay the right price for it, then it can be an existing solution, it can be something completely grounds up, that you will need to offer that will change everything. And that leads me to the story I want to share with you quickly this week. This is the story of a young man called Ludwig Marishain. He's from South Africa. And I was interested when I saw his story. He invented something that is called the dry bath. How? <laughs> his friend did not like having his bath with water. Lazy boy. And this inventor saw that, okay, I can find things that can give the same effect as if you're going to have a, a, a water bath while you are having it dry. You may want to check out that story. So what am I saying? What I'm saying in essence is that whether it is innovation like, like the NFC would have said, 
or is the invention like the dry bath one have said it is the use case and the application that will lend itself to which road you should travel on explore your own world and let's see what you will produce remember the world is waiting for you there is something unique that only you can bring to the world don't let the world be without it that's where i'll have to drop the anchor this week but next week we take a bit we go a bit further and now ask you this question if you are about to start what do you need particularly if you are coming from employment i have some very personal stories to share there so make sure you make it with it next week thanks for being here once again this week like i said join us on the telegram channel tell somebody about this drop us a comment let's know that you are out there because it gives us the 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 the, the wings we need to continue in this flight once again as usual team mark is still my name and all i'm trying to do every week is what Make a little difference. Thank you for being here this week and see you next week. Bye.